Hello once again, Star Wars and Unboxing fans. Welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba, and today we kind of have another mix and match. We have a couple of Black Series items, including an exclusive item, as well as an exclusive Funko Pop item. So why don't we get right down to it? Um, you'll notice that, for the most part, we're kind of um, holding off on our Solo A Star Wars Story action figure unboxings. We did. I did get out there and do a, um, a toy run and did was able to find a few items and then a few items subsequently after that, but um, I've decided to hold off on that for a very simple reason. It's kind of uh, um, not really any big, big to do, but um, my friend uh, purchased the Force Link 2.0 um, device, the one that's the uh, you know second generation of one of these. and. Um, it includes a Han Solo figure, so I want to get that from him. I haven't, ever, I haven't had a chance to connect with him, so I want to get that from him and be able to, so I'll be able to, um, you know, make sure it's working. I know there's been some issues with um, having to update software and things of that nature, so hopefully I'll be able to figure all that out before we start opening up the figures because half the fun of that is trying to get them to talk and to see what they're saying, what their words are. So um, we will uh, get to that eventually. But I have a few other ones until um, that happens and I have a few other items to unbox that we can do before that. So today being one of them. So let's start off with, let's see, we have our clone Captain Rex, okay? Um, which is number 59. We have our clone Royal Guard, number 38. Um, I'm trying to remember if I actually had the Clone Guard. I might have to check that, check on that. I might hold off on this one because now that I'm looking at it, I may have actually already done that. And if that happens, I might offer this as a, uh, a giveaway. So we will take a look and see. Okay, and lastly, we have the Black Series um, Kylo Ren exclusive. And I believe this is a Walmart exclusive or, or it could be elsewhere too, but I think it was Walmart. All right, but let's start um, with something completely different. Let's start with the um, Funko Pop here. They got an interesting thing here. There are two fighting droids. This is actually a Solo a Star Wars Story pack, a two-pack, okay? And uh, again, not knowing the story, I'm not exactly sure what to um, expect from these guys, if they're even going to be play a very prominent role at all. You know how things work, and those of you that have been around a few years, know that uh, just because they release a figure or a playset or a, or a statue or something like a Funko Pop, it doesn't mean by any means that it's going to have any um, very strong bearing on the story or, or it's going to be featured prominently in the movie. So, uh, but I did hear something about a droid fighting, like a, like a droid fighting match, kind of like you know, um, watching chicken fights or dog fights or some kind of thing that people bet on. And this is a droid fighting thing. And I think that might be, um, there might be some connection to Lando's droid. I'm not sure. Okay. And again, I haven't really been looking for spoilers, just things that have been coming, you know, across my desk, um, in passing. So nonetheless, we have our fighting droids. So why don't we just do our unboxing and get them up? This is a GameStop exclusive. By the way, GameStop has got some really fun stuff. If anybody's ever looking to um, find unusual Star Wars collectibles, you can do a lot worse than going to GameStop because GameStop, they just have some really, really cool stuff that you just don't seem to be able to find anywhere else unless you order it online. Um, a lot of the stuff that you would see at ThinkGeek, you know, um, everything, like just very odds and ends type of, th type of things. Um, that would be the kind of thing you have. Wow, okay, so... We have, um, all right, I am not sure what to make of this. It looks like a droid. It almost looks like a droid that has, oh, I, maybe this is supposed to be like, you're supposed to punch. I don't know. It's hard for me to, I don't even know. Um, I'm just trying to base it on where I think the eyes are. It's got chains on one side. I'm guessing some type of a drill or something. And then what looks like a fist. So that would be a very formidable droid. And then we have this, which looks a little like a power droid. It's funny though, I will say this, um, Funko Pop is, is, I love what they do. I love their unique um, way of branding things. But I do have to say that sometimes the bobbleness of their bobble heads leaves something to be desired. Like this guy has no way for his head to bobble. It's very, very little, but nonetheless, he has a little saw on one hand or one appendage and what looks like an axe on the other appendage. So that's pretty cool. 
Um, so I'm not 100% sure about that. But I guess these two are either a team, or they fight each other, um, or they fight other droids. We will find out. We will find out in about 22 days or something of that nature. Um, so that's really cool. But um, this is pretty neat. Uh, and, you know, I like the Funko Pop. As I said, I I've been starting to feel, uh, in previous episodes I've said, you know, I think it's run its course. Um, I, I don't mind that they still make them. I don't mind that people still like them and collect them. I don't have a desire to collect every Funko Pop ever existed. I just like to collect ones that are interesting to me, that seem to have a uniqueness to them. All right, so in these two, they kind of fit the fit the bill for that. So pretty nicely done on that. I like them. Okay, I'm hoping that there's at least some aspect to their story that, that lends itself at least in a, in, a, in a tiny little itsy bitsy bit. But we shall see. All right, so as I said, I'm going to hold off on the Royal Guard. Just in, I'm going to go through my, my, my stock. And by the way, I want to address some com a comment that um, one of my, one of my uh, listeners, or watchers, I should say, uh, made about, you know, noticing when I did, I did the last, one of the last videos I did, I showed the vintage collection that I have, and he noticed that I have them hanging in the rafters. Um, this area that you see here is a basement, and the, while this room is a pretty much a full-size regular room, um, the room next to me is essentially an unfinished room, and therefore you have, you have rafters in the ceiling. Well, I don't, you know, I could have built an actual ceiling, you know, on top of that and, you know, put recessed lighting in and everything. But at the moment, I decided to utilize it until that day comes to just hang figures from the rafters, which is a little unusual, and but it's kind of the common thing. And then he mentioned that, yep, that's every collector's plate is not having enough room. Well, to that, to that uh, viewer, I want to say you're absolutely right. And this is the uh, one of the reasons, and as I mentioned early on, if you look at my way first couple of episodes, you'll see that my initial reasoning for even having this channel is because I needed to start unboxing stuff. There just isn't enough room. I didn't want to sell it. I, I, I really enjoy collecting. I like it, but I'm also a realist. I know that most of these items are not going to be worth, they're worth what I paid for them, and they're probably not going to be worth much more. So I knew that. I am I'm accepting of that. I don't spend you know, unreasonable amounts of money. I'm not someone who buys props from the actual movies or things of that nature. But um, I do I have a limited amount of space. And so I have done some selling in the past. I have done some opening in the past. But, you know, I just want to unbox things because 20 figures in boxes um, take up a lot more room than 20 individual figures out of the box. Um, having said that, though, there are certain things like, for example, the vintage collection that I really like. And I don't like to double if I already have a figure open, so I have to go through and double check to make sure I do. If I do, if it is, it turns out that it is um, a figure I already have unopened I, or unboxed, I will um, get, do, do, run this one as a giveaway. If not, I will unbox it on a future episode. Okay, so let's start then instead with Captain Rex. Now. One of the things I'm, it's very interesting about this is that the Black series has done something a little different. Um, generally speaking, when it comes to characters created for the animated shows like Clone Wars and Rebels, the Black series is sticking mostly to realistic versions of these characters. Now, that I think is, in, is interesting. It's an interesting thing to do. I can understand going either way. So in looking at this figure, I feel as though they did a very nice job of capturing what would essentially be a real human character. Um, I'm a big fan of Captain Rex. I, I feel that that character was something that I'm almost wishing was in the prequel movie. Um, you know, the movies were fine without Captain Rex, but I felt that, you know, in, in hindsight, Captain Rex was an excellent character that I felt would be um, something that would have been nice to see that character develop in a live action setting. But then again, who knows? You know, life is, uh, you know, the Star Wars is not going away anytime soon, so it's possible that a live action series involving Captain Rex could be in the works. You never know. I doubt anybody from Lucasfilm is watching my videos, but if they are, hint, hint. Um, his helmet. And looking at, and again, I'll get some close-ups of these and I'll insert them. His helmet does have a visor that uh, that comes down, kind of like that Boba Fett 
visor. And what I love about the detail on the visor is how they actually have check marks for all the battle droids or clankers, clankers, as he would say, uh, that he has uh, taken down. And his actual uh, uniform, um, looking really good, the good shoulder powder. I, I'm trying to remember, I guess he was blonde. So that looks a little out of place. I'm not sure, maybe because he's got the brown uh, eyebrows. But again, the face is good. It, it does look like um, a Tamara Morrison look-alike. Okay, but we never really saw Tamara Morrison, who played the clones in episode two and three. We never really saw him with um, the blonde hair. So it's interesting that they kind of went that route. But I'm going to probably have him with the, with the helmet on. So I like that too. I like that they are able to, um, you know, do helmets where the helmets are not oversized or the, the heads are not undersized. They seem to have a good match. They've gotten thin enough plastic to do that. Okay, and then he stands, again, all the points of articulation, um, including ankles, which allow him to adjust. Um, he's got a lot of hardware around him, so you have to be a little careful with how you set it up. I'm trying to think, yeah, that looks good. All right. And lastly, Kylo Ren. This is from The Last Jedi, and this is the throne room. So obviously this is the Kylo Ren that is, um, you know, The Last Jedi, Kylo Ren, no helmet. In fact, it, doesn't, it does come with a helmet. So I don't know if that, but I'm looking at the helmet and looking at his head. I am not sure if the helmet would actually work. We will see. So this is one where I might actually keep the package because there's multiple things in this package there's the hilt there is the lightsaber with and you know activated and deactivated I don't want to use both so what I think I'll do is uh, take out I think I'll leave the one in the hilt and I think I want to leave the helmet I don't think Choking on this thing. Oh boy, unlike uh, unlike Captain Rex, who just kind of came right out, this Kylo Ren is extremely. Uh, oh wow, it's like a lo loose, um, a, you know, loose cape and everything. I'm gonna put that on now. All right, uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave the hilt and the helmet in there. Although I do want to take out the saber, and I want to. But the, 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 the exclusives are generally the same figures, which I don't mind. I mean, there's some people that get really upset at that, and I'm like, well, you know, you don't have to buy the figure if you don't want it. That's kind of my feeling on it. I did want to buy it because I like the base. Um, sometimes if I know in advance that they're going to be making an exclusive figure, I would I'll choose to only get the, get the one if it's the exact same figure. But there's always some you know, subtle differences between them, so. But again, not having them, uh, so, uh, not having them in the boxes is a, you know, helpful thing. Speaking of that, I did have a, a question asked of me if I, if I kept the boxes. And the answer to that is a resounding, um, sometimes. <laughs> I, I collect the boxes from time to time if it's a really rare type of item. One thing I like about Black Series is that they do make it fairly easy for you to put the um, the figure... Ooh, I just noticed something. I'll come back to it in a second. Um, it makes it really easy for you to take the figure and um, put it back in the package if you decide you no longer want to keep it displayed out of the package. I, thought, I like that about Black Series. Um, Having said that, I have kept some of the figures, boxes, but now with, you know, if I'm keeping a figure and I'm keeping a box, then guess what? The figure is, I'm, 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 I'm in the same predicament. I have a figure that, and a box that needs to take up room. So, I'm kind of, I'm kind of stuck. All right, I just noticed something about this. This is a very interesting thing about this. This cape... sure I'm getting the cape bit because the cape looks like it it just it just hangs it almost you know what it looks like it looks like they have they use the plastic part of his long hair in the back to just kind of catch the back of the cape that is odd 
Um, I won't lie. That is a little strange. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, because I just feel like, you know, these things are not going to last. You know, this eventually these, these figures do, in fact, you know, um, they do, in fact, find themselves coming apart. The only thing is that this base, it's a really cool kind of semi-circle. I think it has pegs, and I'm assuming that these pegs are for... But I'm going to tell you... Oh, there it goes. Okay. The cool thing is that you can... It looks like you can actually put a few more figures on there. So what I think I might try is a Ray, Kylo, and one Praetorian Guard. And if I ever end up with a second Praetorian Guard um, figure mashup, I can put it together as a little diorama. So that is really cool. All right, but as I said, this cape, you've got to be careful with it because it's... I mean, it's just a soft cape. It's not like it's moldable or anything, so it's kind of odd. But nonetheless, um, it's a really cool cape, and I, um, as long as it stays like this, it looks like it's pretty good. All right, so, and again, you got the Kylo Ren face, you know, the good 3D imaging, so that's really neat. So, overall, really happy with this. I do like the bases. I do like the exclusives. Um, it allows me to, you know, expand upon how I want to display them. It gives me more choices. Um, maybe someday if I do decide to downsize, you know, if I have an exclusive version that's the exact same as another version, that other version might end up getting sold, or who knows, I mean, if I'm still running my channel, a giveaway might be possible. We shall see. Um, I also had another comment from a viewer wondering why I don't have more views, and, and that is true. Uh, I know that my channel has got minimal views. In fact, I know many of you that view it. So um, I'm okay with that. Um, but if anybody would like to, get, I would certainly be okay with more viewers. So, um, you know, if you know anybody who might be interested, it's a niche channel, I get it. Um, so if anybody would be interested in that, you know, to to uh, let, let them know and people subscribe and hit the notification button, okay? Because um, it's, a, it's a fun channel. It's very positive. It's very simple. Um, and I enjoy doing it. So if anybody else wants to see it, here it's out here. Uh, I do notice that some of the earlier episodes are starting to get up there in numbers because people are kind of going around and exploring and the things that this pops up. So, but that'll do it for this episode. As I said, like, subscribe, share, spread the word, let other people know about the channel that you think might be interested. Uh, Instagram and Twitter at Darth Tuba and Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing page on Facebook and email me DarthTuba77 at gmail.com if you have any questions or you can just leave a comment. Um, we will have future um, giveaways, but right now, in the meantime, um, again, episodes drop typically on Sundays and Wednesdays, so hope to uh, you know have you on board for more viewer viewings. Uh, until the next episode, thank you so much, and may the force be with you. I said may the force be with you. I meant may the force be with you. But happy may the force be with you, which is this week too.